The next several videos are going to be talking about forms within PHP and we're going to shift the focus there so that we can have some user interaction within our actual programming code that we've got here. Now forms themselves are part of the HTML language and it is not part of PHP and you can see that I'm still working with the PHP page that I have been throughout the entire series, page1.php. What we're going to do is we're going to put a form outside of the actual PHP delimiters and later on we're going to actually write code within here to manipulate that form or the data that's sent through the form. So a form is going to be more of an HTML thing and so if you want to do additional research on forms check out some there's a lot of resources on the web that have to deal with forms and the objects within forms for HTML but I'm going to show you how to set one up. Basically it's a form tag that we're going to need to have and there's going to be two attributes that are required for us to actually be able to take this data from our form. The first one is the action and I'm going to go ahead and type in action equals and then what's going to go in here in the equal sign is the page that's going to handle the data. So where are we sending the form to? The page that's going to actually take the data and do something with it. So that's the action and in this case what I'm going to plan on doing is it's going to be the same page that I'm working on. So I'm going to plan on sending the data to myself basically. If you have an HTML page created, you can put a form in an HTML regular web page and then send it to a different page here with the action. You can actually send it to the PHP page that you have created. So it doesn't have to be the same one. I use page one and I'm doing it within the same page one. However, you can send it to another PHP page and have that page process a script and it will work. When you hit submit, it's going to send the data automatically and then load that page. So page1.php is what I want here for my action. The next thing that we need is going to be the method and the method is going to be one of two choices. You have get or post. Get is going to be sending the data and what it does is it appends the information from our form and sends it in, on the, in the URL itself, the web address. And that is um, a common method, however it's not the one that I prefer. I actually kind of like the post method and the post method will allow us to embed the data within the actual data that's being sent to um, our action page, which is right here. And that's the preferred method I like to use, so I'm going to use post as my method here. So we've got the form, we've got our action, we've got our method. Those are the two attributes of our form tag that we need. So I can close out the uh, opening tag, and I need to put in a closing tag for my form as well. So I'll just go ahead and put that closing tag in there. And then we can send, actually just start creating some objects within my form. So let's go ahead and create one object. I'm going to go ahead and do first name. So I'll type in first name, and this is just going to be plain text within HTML. So if you're not familiar with HTML, I hit save and refresh, you'll see that all I see is first name here. It's not really in a tag, it's just plain text. So that's the text on my page. After that, I plan on entering in a text box. So we'll need to use the input tag. We'll tell it its type is going to equal text. So I'll go ahead and type in text. And I need to give it a name. Those so I need the type attribute and the name attribute are the ones that are going to be required. So the name of this one, I'm going to go ahead and call it F name. Notice that the name is going to be all lowercase. I just prefer to use all lowercase so that I don't make mistakes because it will be case sensitive when we start working with the PHP code on this one. Also that it's all one name. It doesn't have spaces in the name at all. I prefer to do it that way. Um, so I would just, that's how I'm going to do all my names here for this one. So I've got the type and the name attributes for the input. If I close this out, there we go, and I hit save, refresh it over here, you'll see that a text box now appears after the first name. Now the first name and the text box really aren't linked together at all. The only thing that links them together is the fact that they're on the same line of code and I don't have a break between them. What really is most important is this name right there. When we start working with our PHP code, that's the name that we're going to pull the data from, from this particular text box. And so I'm going to have that name there. So let's go ahead, throw a break tag in there. And then on the next line of code, we're going to go ahead and just type in last name. And I'll go ahead and do another input. And the type is going to equal text. The name. And the names have to be unique. So I'm going to go ahead now and give it an L name. There we go. And we'll throw in that break tag. All right. 
So I've got first name and last name. If I hit save and refresh, you'll see first name and last name both appear there, and I've got breaks after both of those. So those are the typical things that we use in most forms or text boxes. There are a lot of different attributes you can use with this. I will tell you that if you do a little bit of Google searching or just a little bit of research on the web, you'll find that uh, there's a lot of attributes you can use and they're not too hard to come by. Just do kind of search on HTML forms or buttons and text boxes within HTML and you should be able to find all that. I'm going to show you one more. Let's just go ahead and do an about. And rather than using a text box, I'll go ahead and use a text area. and it allows for a larger space to type rather than just a regular text box. So I'll use a text area and let's go ahead and give the text area a name of about. Alright, now with the text area it's a little bit different. I actually have to have a closing text area tag on this one. There we go. And So there's my text area. If I save it and refresh it you'll see that I get an about section and it's a little bit different of, a, of an object here for my form. One thing that's going to be needed most though is the name because that's what we're going to reference when it comes to our PHP code. So that's the valuable thing that I need in the text area. Now let's go ahead and throw some buttons in there. I'll throw a break tag at the end of this one first. And then at the end here let's go ahead and throw in a reset button. So for the reset button what I'll do is just an input. Again the type is going to equal reset. So we'll type in reset and I'll go ahead and give it a name of reset. The name is not so important on the reset button because I'm not really going to be pulling that code across. It's going to be named equals reset. There we go. Um, the reset button, if we use a type of reset, it's just going to go ahead and reset our form for us automatically. Um, the one that's really most important for us to work with is going to be the submit button. So the type is going to end up being a submit button and what that means is it's going to go ahead and take our form and actually submit it to the action page that we have using the post method. So the type is going to equal submit and then the name I'm going to go ahead and have it equal for the name submit. And you can give it any name you want however um, again I use lowercase letters here because when I'm working with the PHP code I want everything to be lowercase so just get in the habit of either choosing lowercase or all uppercase if you really want to because it's going to be case sensitive in our code. So this is going to give me, if I hit save and refresh, it'll give me the reset and submit buttons. If you don't like the names of those, you can easily change them with the value attribute. So I can just type in value equals, and I could just hit something like, let's just type in go. And hit save and refresh, and you'll see the button has changed to a go button. But it still is the type submit and that is what I need to actually send this form off to the page1.php, the action attribute that I have up here. So this is the basics of a form within PHP or within the HTML tags. And now I'll just go ahead and close up my form. Let's see, clean up my code a little bit so that the form is all together. There we go. And let's go ahead and just try it real quick. I'm going to save and refresh my page. So if I typed in a name, Matthew Penning, about, this is about me and then I hit reset. You'll see that it resets everything. It doesn't actually send it. If I redo it again and type in Matthew, ending this is about me. And I hit go. You'll notice that this refreshed up here if you take a look at the screen. And that's because it actually submitted it. It submitted it back to the PHP page. Now in the next video we're going to start talking about how to get some of that information. What I can tell you right now is that it submitted it to the page, which is page one, so it submitted it back to myself. However, I don't see anything happen because I never pulled the data out to do anything with it. So we'll do that here within the next couple of videos.